Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are listening to us. My name is Jacqueline Asimwe and I am hosting Footprints, a podcast of and about our senior citizens, their journeys, their stories, their highs, their lows, and their advice to those that are growing up after them. Today, my guest is Arthur Blick Sr. We are very pleased to have you on Footprints today, and I'd like you to tell our guests a bit about yourself. Going way back in time to as far as you remember, what is looking back to your childhood, a favorite childhood memory? <laughs> a favorite childhood memory? Well, uh, uh, one thing, I, I uh, when I was uh, still a young fellow, mm -hmm. I had Hupinko. Oh. <laughs> So I really became a small guy, mm -hmm. and uh, my brother Paddy was a big bully, he used to bully me a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I used to see my mother running after, because he used to beat me a little bit, then mm -hmm. I see my mother running after him, mm -hmm. giving him a few blows or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, that one brought about uh, that I should also do some exercise. And yeah, it's so well, at least I can. Uh, 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 imagine the reasons people do exercise. Yes. Yeah, so I started with early mm -hmm. in primary. I also started boxing in primary six. Mm -hmm. uh, so as to be able to meet yes, <laughs> yes. my brother. Yes, yes, yes. So th that is what made me uh, very competitive in everything I did. Mm -hmm. So when we also started motorcycle racing, mm -hmm. I also, and then I started beating him. So that's not what really happened. Mm -hmm. Now I'm the one who was beating him. Oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. So yes. Th those are childhood memories. I knew it took me up from there. That is what uh, motivated me mm -hmm. to become a good person and then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. match up with him so yes. that I can yes. also start beating him. Yes, yes. Yes, so... I excelled in most of the sports because of that until we were par with my brother now. So how did you discover sports? How did you discover that that was your thing? You see, our mother was a sports mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. She used to ride bicycles. She used to play football. We love her people there on the, uh, in Masaka, in the village where she used the state. So she liked sports a lot, so mm -hmm. she also took us for sports. Mm -hmm. Whenever there was motorcycle racing, like people, they would take us to go and watch. Mm -hmm. Rally cars used to pass uh, near Nambole Stadium. We used to stay the way we get up behind there. Mm -hmm. We used to come on the road and watch it. Then one day we said, ah, we also do this one. Mm -hmm. Motorcycle racing in Nakibo Stadium, we used to go there watch the Dick Kawesans or the Indian riding. We said, okay. When we grow up, we also do that. Yes. Yeah. So our mother will encourage us and bought us all the uh, equipment, motorcycles, mm -hmm. what so that we do. Yeah. All that. Yes. So can you take me a bit through your, you know, when did you now start doing it as a competitive thing? Well, for, uh, I did boxing as well mm -hmm. from primary six onwards. Uh, I did a bit of competitive, uh, you did flyweight, uh, suddenly flyweight, went up to featherweight, went up to lightweight. I did several weights I was uh, growing up mm -hmm. in the sports, uh, some of the sports. Then uh, rugby. Mm -hmm. yes, rugby. As well. Oh, my rugby. goodness. See, yes. The sports I was doing, uh, the motorcycle racing I was doing, needed a lot of physical energy. Mm -hmm. Because people think that you just sit on the bike. And take yourself. And uh, take yourself. But then there's a lot of work you do on the motorcycle. <laughs> Changing gears, I don't know how many thousand times you change gears in the race. You are standing on it, you remove your foot, you were putting it there. So you sweat a lot. You take a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So then I had to do the rugby at the same time for fitness. It's to do rugby and squash. Mm -hmm. Squash, it is. This one. Yes, 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 yes. For speed. Yes. And once you are fast, well, everything else you will do, you will be doing it fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many medals did you win? And what was the span of your uh, competitive sports? How many years did you do competitive, competitive sports? Sport. Mm -hmm. Competitive sports that I did mostly was uh, motorcycles and mm -hmm. rally cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I started rallying in uh, 1972, I think. Two years after I was won. Uh, two years, okay. Uh, 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 and yes. mo motorcycle racing, I started in, in 65 when I was in Syria, say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So that's when I started all the competitive uh, sports mm -hmm. until 1982, mm -hmm. when I got this accident. Mm -hmm. um, so all my competitives were all the 660 trophies that I got during that during that period from all the different sports. Then I got this accident in 1982 in July, July 1982. 10th, 1982, in Kakindo Stadium in Jinja. Mm -hmm. That's where I fell down. Somebody passed over my back, and I got a spinal injury. I've been in the wheelchair now for 40 years. Yes. To date. Wow. Yeah. So that was the end of my competitive sport. The other then. But 660 trophies yes. means you must have, that was your life. Yes. You did nothing else apart from sports. Yes. Wow. Mm. I, 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 it, it is amazing just to think about that. Yes. And it's such, a, it's such a meaning that if you had continued, you'd probably be <laughs> in the Guinness Book of Record. Yes. The most uh, trophies probably. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, because I would have continued with uh, maybe the lesser ones like mm -hmm. uh, driving cars and all that. At this age, I would have gone to cars. Yeah, and yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So when you transitioned to rallying, mm -hmm. motor, mo motor rally, did you leave the motorbike? No, or you were doing. Oh, you were doing both. I was doing both. Oh, wild time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was doing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I was East African champion mm -hmm. for four years, mm -hmm. and uh, national champion. For 14 years. Wow. That's a year. So year it, after year after year. After year. Consecutive years. Yes. That's amazing. That's an amazing. Those are the main things yeah. that happened mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you. That's a major transition coming from such a sporty life. Yes. To a spinal injury. Can you just walk us through what were you. What were you feeling or rumbling with wrestling with during that time? Yes. That's the most difficult thing, you know, when you come from a very active life. Yes. Uh, very active. Uh, it's all that sports, all this, all this. And do nothing when you are doing nothing now. Absolutely. Just sit, I mean, lying down the bed and all that. So when I got this spinal injury, I was, uh, my back had to heal. So I was for six months lying on my back, yeah, on the bed. Everything I did on the bed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I couldn't get up, but after six months, then they healed the back, healed the feet, then I could start sitting up. So I was there, I was thinking, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. My mother said, no, don't worry, I'll look up, stay, stay here at Weoge. I said, no, no, no. I can't stay at Weoge doing nothing. So I I had to go back to Tank Hill. Tank Hill was my home, mm -hmm. I my home there. So I'd go, I went back to Tank Hill. And uh, I had, uh, because of my sports and sports, motorcycle and rally cars, I, had all, I was also doing uh, mechanics. I was doing the repairing the bikes and the cars, the engines, what. So I just started doing that on Tank Hill. The rally driver used to come to my place and I do the engines there, what. Yeah. So I, I had a lot of customers who, come, who came there. Mm -hmm. So that the life goes on, you know, rather than just me laying down, sitting, yes, doing yes, nothing. Yes, yes. So I did a lot of that uh, to get me by. Then I also bought land on this side. Mm -hmm. And this side is? This side, the Kisisi, Chagway side, mm -hmm. uh, the part of Mukono. Mm -hmm. So I bought land on this side. And uh, and I started the farm this side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I also had an, uh, I opened a workshop on you know, Ruga Road mm -hmm. uh, for repairing those cars and everything. I moved it from Tank Hill. Mm -hmm. I sold Tank Hill and bought land on this site. So, and then I bought land on the Ruga Road. That's where the, my son's workshop is now. I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it there and here. Then I saw. Why don't I give my son that one and I and I concentrate this side completely on farm? Mm -hmm. So I gave that piece to my uh, that farm uh, workshop to my son. Mm -hmm. I came this side in mm -hmm. '93. I started a farm here, 
or doing fruits. Mm. I'm an agriculture officer by profession. Mm. Mm. Who went into? Yeah, I was doing all the other sports yes. and everything, oh, wow. but I was an agriculture okay. officer. That's very interesting. I, I used to work in Mukono mm-hmm. as an agriculture officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for about five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then when Amin came in and every the money was very little, my salary was one thousand uh, what, one thousand six hundred shilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much would that be now? <laughs> <in India>? Yeah. <laughs> well, we would. It was worth it. It, it was in was that twice, time. but yes, yes, yes. But, but so this then, was the late 1970s. Yes, yeah, so, but then when Amin came in, the money mm-hmm. started dropping mm-hmm. back, so I had to look for other things. I left the, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and went to doing workshop mm-hmm. and uh, started a workshop on first on 6th Street, then the other back road. Then the accident came in. And those are the things that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and from the accident, uh, you also said you started an association for uh, physically. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, from the accident, after I got uh, physically disabled, mm-hmm. so I even went, when I came this side, before that, when I came this side, uh, this farm, this side, in uh, 93, I I joined politics. Mm-hmm. Mm, first, I joined politics. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, politics, how did I join? I became LC1 chairperson of mm-hmm. the village. Up to date. Up to date. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Up That's about 20 date. years. No, no, no. 93, 90. Oh, 30. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So, up Again. To, <laughs> yes, yes, I yes. I became chairman of LC1 on the side. Mm-hmm. And I went, became a district councillor. Representing physical disability on Mokono. Yes. Mokono Council. Then, uh, uh, then there was the election for parliamentary election. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they putting some slots for PWD yes. there. So. Yes, yes. So I stood. Mm-hmm. I stood for the PWD, but I was second to the other one who won. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Daisy. Alex um, Alex and Daisy, yes, yes. Alex. I know I know him, yeah. You know him. So you are yeah. now during those elections, what I saw is that there were there were only three organizations which are represented, which represented the, uh, the all the disabled people. There is one for the blind, mm-hmm. one for the deaf, and one for women. Mm-hmm. But then most of the people are physically disabled. Mm-hmm. So that organization was not there. Mm-hmm. So I started to make that, uh, I started to organize people. I started clinical rehabilitation there. We used to do some meetings there so that we make an organization of physically disabled. Mm-hmm. So that's when I made it. We made it, uh, we tried to organize it, but then Nodipu, Nodipu is a national. You know, no, persons with disability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. disability. Now for them, they said, no, no, no. We can't have a physically disabled because they are going to take up all of our, our work. Mm. So they they were, they were also trying to put it down so we so that we couldn't form this organization. Mm-hmm. Now what we did, we organized a few friends of mine, then they put me on the board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no mm-hmm. So then I argued from the inside now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is this. Until they agreed, they're okay. Let's uh, let them make an organization. Mm-hmm. So. I met, we went, registered it as an NGO, with the NGO board and what have you, and we registered it. So after that, a few years, about two years afterwards, uh, James Mwanda was MP. Yes, I remember. He also made a second one now for a physical disabled. Yours was? For the physical disabled, and he also made one for the... <laughs> okay. Yes. So we were there like that until we sat down together and said, why should we? You're doing the same or doing the same. Why don't we join the show of us? Mm-hmm. So we joined mm-hmm. both of us. And we got, uh, we made one organization. Yes. So him, yes. because he was in MT, I said, okay, you'll be the vice. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll be the chairman, I'll be the vice. Mm-hmm. So I was vice mm-hmm. until he died uh, sometime later on. Mm-hmm. Then I finished his Kisanja. 
and went on in my kitchen. So mm-hmm. now I'm extremely chairperson. Mm-hmm. In the last Sunday now. Yes, yes, yes. By December, we are going to do elections. And mm-hmm. uh, hand over. Hand over to mm-hmm. America. But, but I'm the one who started it. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. yeah. What do you think in the in the years that it has been running, mm-hmm. what do you think it has achieved? It has achieved a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have achieved quite a bit because we have the uh, uh, donors were the ones who, you know, I was a donor all the night. Yes. Sponsored. The, yes. So we've managed, uh, the main thing we've managed is this uh, accessibility standards. We've made accessibility standards. You, you know, the difficulty with a person who's got disabled is how to enter the house, yeah. the shops, the what, they are all steps there, there or everywhere, everywhere. No lips here, no that, that. So we made these uh, accessibility standards, and then we took them to parliament because we have uh, four MP representing us there. Mm-hmm. So we passed this uh, accessibility standard in parliament that now. All buildings are supposed to be accessible. Supposed to be. Is that like you are? Yes, 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 yes. They, they must be. Yeah. Because if we, if you are not, then we can take you to court to say, why did you, <laughs> why did you put this there? Mm-hmm. So th- that is what we did. So that is the main thing that uh, we, we we are very proud of. Yes, that yes, did yes. The accessibility standard yes. and parliament for us. Yes, yes. And for those who don't know and and have never being part of these processes. I don't want them to think that uh, you wrote the standards today and tomorrow they are passed. It's a whole, it takes several years yeah, it takes. to do this advocacy, to explain why this is important, to get buy-in, yeah. to finally get standards passed. It's quite a journey. Yes, it is. Yeah. How long did that, you know, from thinking about it all the way to being passed in Parliament, how many years did that take? Uh, it took us several years. Uh, must be about close to five years before mm-hmm. then Parliament passed it. Yes. Then now it is supposed to be in the implemented. implemented. Yes, yes, yes. Now even all the districts, all buildings are supposed to have accessibility. Yes. yes, yes. You see, you know, Parliament has. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, they have that big ramp. Yes. That big ramp there. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, you, you, if you go to Parliament, all the MPs never pass the steps. They, they also do the, this is the ramp. Yes, I know. So it actually works for everybody. It works for everybody. When spaces are accessible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So then uh, you go from that to starting a farm, and we've been talking about wine. How did yeah. you get into bleak wine? I started the farm here with the fruits. Mm-hmm. So I was selling fruits to... Uh, fruits that is oranges, avocados, and mango. Mm-hmm. So I was selling them to Uchumi supermarket. Mm-hmm. I used to, you know, there's a good orange in the seedless one, big mm-hmm. oranges. So those are the ones I used to sell there. And uh, gonja and all that. Mm-hmm. So I used to make quite a bit of money out of mm-hmm. them. Until uh, Uchumi closed yes, business. Yes, sadly, yes. They closed yes. business. Mm-hmm. Then I was just selling locally. Yeah, then I which is not very really worth it, you know, mm-hmm. locally here, yeah, then Gaba Market. Gaba Market is just across the lake from me. Mm-hmm. You can see it from here. Mm-hmm. So I used to sell there. Their prices are not good. What? So I said, let me see what can I now start doing, which are, pays me better. Mm-hmm. So my daughter, Lisa, she's an architect. Mm-hmm. So she was working in Sudan. While she was working in Sudan, um, she had a, a mulberry tree, big one, mm-hmm. quite an old one there. Mm-hmm. She used, she made some wine out of it because she used to see me making wine on Tank Hill yes. from those grapes I had on Tank Hill. So she also made some wine there. And when she came back, she brought me some, said, you taste this one, it's from, mul- uh, from mulberry. So I said, oh, that's good. I tasted the wine, I said, it's red wine, tastes nicely. And these mulberries, we had them at Woyoge, at our place there. My mother had liked fruits, so she had planted quite a few. When I used to go to, I was in St. Henry's College, to in Masaka, mm-hmm. for my senior one and two. Mm-hmm. I used to make jam out of those mulberries. <laughs> I used to take an old jar every, every term, mm-hmm. one jar, mm-hmm. full of mulberries. When I go back for holidays, I make another jar, so I go with that. 
Me and my friend, we used to put on our bread. Yeah. We were eating dry bread. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So that's that one. So I knew. So I just went to well, okay, them our home there, get some cuttings, and I started mm -hmm. also planting those. Then I started making my bread wine. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And so it's been how many years of doing the wine now? Uh, the mulberry, yeah, doing mul from mulberry. Now I think this is a sad year. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is a sad year. So that is uh, the ideal mulberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm going into stuff fruit as well. Mulberry is for red, red wine. Stuff fruit I'm going to make the for white wine. White wine, yes. If if you analogize winemaking and life, mm. what do you think are the lessons between yeah, what, what lessons do you draw from winemaking that one can apply to life? What lessons? Well, the good thing with with wine making is that it's a product that stays for a long time. Mm. It doesn't get spoiled mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. give it for many years. Uh, it's it's not like the if you're just selling the fruits which uh, get spoiled. To, if you don't sell them today, tomorrow they are starting rotting or something. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so wine is uh, for for life is good. It's it stays. It keeps for long. Mm -hmm. You don't have too much of a hassle that these fruits are getting spoiled. Mm -hmm. What you make, mm -hmm. if you're selling just fruits, mm -hmm. which I came from, the mangoes, avocados, was all the yes. went into this wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's not not only wine which I'm going to do mm -hmm. because mulberry, I'm going to make syrup. I'm going to make jam, jam. Yeah, put yeah. on the bread. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, local color. Yes, yes. Then I'm going to make syrup. Mm -hmm. Syrup is. Uh, this uh, red stuff you can put in yogurt, make a mm. yogurt red, put in ice cream, you mm. come, you know, the different color. Yes. So most of these people in town, they are using artificial colors, which they put in these yogurts and what. Yeah. But this is a natural fruit, red color. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make yogurt, I mean, syrup mm -hmm. out of them, so that uh, I sell it to these people, mm -hmm. make ice cream mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. yogurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the one, one other product. Then the other product is is uh, silk. Mm, <laughs> a silk? Silk. Oh, wow. Because uh, the, the mulberries you've seen, mm -hmm. as you're going up, we've mm -hmm. removed the leaves. Yes. You know, you've got to remove the leaves, bend the branches down, so that each each node brings the branch, uh, brings the shoot, shoots out mm -hmm. mulberries, mm -hmm. so that you can get at least two to three kilos on a tree. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, the tree will just remain there to produce 10, 12 mm -hmm. mulberry, which won't be economical for you to get. Yeah. So me, I, I remove the leaves to make it produce. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the mulberry is not indigenous. Yeah, it's a European plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens is uh, being European in Europe, there, there's winter, there's what, there's summer, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yes, yes, yes. So they are fruiting is they have to lose leaves to produce fruit. Mm -hmm. So that is what I discovered with it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you want them to produce fruit, mm -hmm. remove the leaves mm -hmm. and uh, bend the branches out. Mm -hmm. Then the shoot out immediately bring new fruit. Mm -hmm. Anytime you do it, dry season, wet season, anytime. So that's the thing I discovered with mulberry. That's why in, mm -hmm. with this mulberry, I get five to six crops a year. So the duration of each crop is about two months only. After two months, there's things, things are ripe, they are off, then you remove the leaves again. Yes, yes. Yes, so you can have five to six crops yes. a year. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why it's productive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I hear from what you're sharing is mm -hmm. just the capacity as, as, as leaders, as people to keep innovating. Mm -hmm to shed some things that are not working in order to produce yeah. even better. Yes. But also to think long term. Yes. Yeah, what are the things that, that we can do that, that last uh even across generations mm. sometimes? What is that that you can what well, do with your life, do with what you have been given in your hands, in your heart, in your mind, yes. that will outlive you as a person. Yeah. That is what I learned from your story and your your the making of the wine. Yes. In a sense, and I, you know, 
Footprints also talks about transitions into retirement, mm. but I almost want to see you. How, how young are you now? <laughs> oh, let's see. How young am I? Mm -hmm. Before I go to how young am I? Yes, yes, yes. The other thing that uh, comes out of when you are producing something mm -hmm. is uh, the value addition that matters. Oh, yes. Value addition. Are you go. adding value. Yeah, adding mm -hmm. value. So if I was just selling fruits, I know, yes. there, there is one kilo of uh, mulberry, they'll give you what, 3,000 mm -hmm. yeah. shillings. But one kilo will give me a bottle of wine, which will be. More money. More money. Yes. So value yes. addition matters mm -hmm. about whatever you do. Yes. yes. So me, I discovered that, that me, I want to produce something and then do the value. Yes. Well. Yes. Finish mm -hmm. value. Yeah. Uh, get, get value out of it. Mm hmm rather than having something that uh, you produce, give it to somebody else to sell. To the, and that one makes more money than you because for you, he adds on, he adds a market for you. You don't have, so it really presses you down. It gives you as little money as possible. So value addition matters a lot mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. and when you do value addition, you can control your price mm -hmm. at a given thing. Mm -hmm. Now, my age, I'm in my last quarter. Yeah. <laughs> it might be second last. How do we know? Might yeah. be second last. No, that. No, in a, in a century, they are, in a, I in a, in the they they are four quarters. Okay, that's how you're counting it. So zero to twenty-five. Yeah. Twenty-five. Twenty-five to fifty. Yeah. Fifty-one to seventy-five. Yeah. Oh, so you're in that. That's yeah. over hundred. Yeah. But you might be. No. Yeah. In in May this year will be seventy-six. Uh huh. So that that's why I'm saying I'm in my last. In the last quarter. quarter. <laughs> I can't go beyond mm -hmm. the He was my father I mean, died when he was eighty something. My mother was also in the eighty something. Mm -hmm. so I just have a few more years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what yeah. do you contemplate? What do you think about mm -hmm. in the last quarter of one's life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what does that look like to transition to that and know that at whatever point the clock is winding down anyway? Mm -hmm. In the transition to that I'm uh, I'm going. Uh, you see this land I have here. Mm. Huh? I've uh, given my children. Uh, it's the, on the lake here. They have all their the daughters have plots. Mm -hmm. Son that and my son's house next door here. Mm -hmm. The other side they give it to my sister. She gave it to to Navio. Mm -hmm. Then up there we have a sports complex. Mm -hmm. We are going to build a sports mm -hmm. complex up there. So the bleak uh, sports complex. Yes. So that. Things continue. I mean, it bleak. Yeah. So a sports complex is going to have a track for for bikes and mm -hmm. cars. Mm -hmm. As we are going to have a competition swimming pool, like a Olympic swimming pool site. Mm -hmm. uh, basketball, beach volleyball, netball, and all those mm -hmm. squash. We are going to build it up there. So and also, I want to put it a zip line. Mm -hmm. You know, well, zip line. I do. Yes, 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 yes. I've zip lined over Bunyoni. I've zip lined. Uh, I think when I visited Mauritius, I yes, yes, the planning is amazing. I'm going because you see right up to the top of that hill, mm -hmm. still by property. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come from up there, going downwards there. Mm -hmm. It's quite a long. This is the highest hill around here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a zip line there as well, and uh, that will be that. So then here, uh, these children are all going to build their houses here, mm -hmm. and maybe they'll continue with the wine, or mm -hmm. they can do anything else they mm -hmm. want. So what I'm looking at is how are they going to take things forward? Mm -hmm. You know, these days, if you, most children, if they are not told properly what's the value of this, what's the value of mm -hmm. that, they start selling off. Yes, oh yes, they do. They sell this off. When I would have sold it myself and buy, you know, and buy something that I, yeah. I would have sold the land and bought a, a, a plane for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they get a chance to sell it uh, just like that. So I want to see that they don't sell get the idea of selling so that they, are, they know the value mm -hmm. in it when they get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The good thing is what I'm going to do for continuity, mm -hmm. I'm not giving it to the, the other ones, them individually. They, mm -hmm. they, they, all of them have to sit down and agree. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. My father has done the same. So, yes. yeah, I, I mm -hmm. think it's, it's a good way to preserve. Yeah, to preserve. And elongate a, a legacy. Mm. And I see that you're still very connected with sports. So it didn't die yes. just because the accident happened. Mm. It's, it's in your blood. Yes, it is. <laughs> it wow. Is. wow. Mm. And 
if you're advising a younger leader now, mm. um, especially those that are wheelchair bound that have disabilities or even that don't yet, because I think we all assume, ah, yeah, you know, mm. yeah. What would your words of advice be for uh, politician? No, 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 no. For for just general, gen gen as a senior citizen mm. talking to those that are not yet senior but are coming towards okay yes uh though uh, what i haven't said about is i've been uh i've been in politics mm. uh, yes i've okay. been i'm the lc1 chairperson yes, here yes, for 30 years yes i've been district councillor in gono i've been uh, lc3 chairperson of this sub county mm -hmm. uh now I'm LC, I'm LC two chairperson of this. Uh, That's a lot of work, hiring, and I'm still LC one chairperson. Mm. <laughs> so you are one, two, and three. I, I, no, I was. You I, have been. I've been the three, uh, but now presently you're the I'm LC one, LC one yes. and the LC two. Uh -huh. and the LC one chairperson, which was my vice died. Mm -hmm. Then the the villagers here refused to say no, give the stamp back to us. Mm -hmm. So I went back again. So I have. I'm the only one in Uganda who has two stamps, LC1 and... Wow, that's <laughs> amazing though. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So what I advise uh, people, el elderly or whoever, or younger fellows, mm. to uh, go into sing because if I had just said I have had the accident, now I'm all just going to sleep, mm -hmm. doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing all those things so that I keep myself uh, busy. Yeah. Now I'm very busy. You see all these chairs which are here. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. So uh, like today they, uh, we have uh, a case. Yes. So all these chairs are going to be filled with mm. people who are coming for that case. So I'm quite busy. Yes. So as an elder, you've got to keep yourself busy. Mm -hmm. When you keep yourself busy, you last longer. Mm. Uh? Mm. And also, You've got to leave a track. Yeah. That this guy was there before, but when you die, they say, yeah, "What the hell was that?" So the one who stole my chicken. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes. So give up. Got to leave a legacy. That no, oh, this one used to belong to this one. This one did was this one. Yes. Yeah. They remember yes. you for a long time yes. when they know that you've been here and there and then. Yeah. Yes. yes. And left a good track record. Left a good track record. Mm. Yes. Mm. It's been such an honor. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. And for those that are listening and are not able, we are going away with bottles of wine, which we have bought, <laughs> as part of the legacy of Arthur, the sport, the leadership in his community. It, it hits one transition to another. It doesn't end. He keeps active. And we thank you for your service to this country. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Listeners, thank you so much for listening to us today. And until we bring you another guest, it is bye-bye for now. Bye.